Howdy everyone, this is Pedram, and in this episode, I will talk about VS Code GitHub and Sync setting. This is going to be a very, very useful and practical feature that we can version control our code and files directly from VS Code Editor. So without further ado, let's look into that. So as always, I'm going to go ahead and open the VS Code. So this is where we left off last time. And now we need to see how can I uh, basically put everything that I have here in this workspace on my GitHub account. So the, for those of you who are not familiar with GitHub, GitHub is a place where you can save your codes and it lets you and others to work together on a project from basically anywhere, right? So this means that you can keep track on who is doing what while you're working on a project. So this is very, the, 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 we call this version control, and it is very popular among the developers. Okay, so we're going to learn how to do the, how to set up a GitHub account and how we can connect our GitHub uh, to the VS Code directly. So this means that at the end of the day, when I make changes here, I'm going to push these changes to my GitHub repository and uh, I can share it with my students or you can share it with your coworkers and etc. So first we need to make a GitHub account online. Um, you go to github.com and then click on sign up. Here you need to basically put your email address. So it's PJ free tutorial. So this is the email address that I just created for this tutorial. And let's pick a password. I don't know. Let me pause the video and make a password. All right, I made a strong password. Mm. And enter a username. So let me see. I'm going to say PJ GitHub. It's not available. Okay, then it's asking for a username. So let's try PJ GitHub to, well, PJ GitHub is not available. So let's add PJ GitHub tutorial, tutorial. Yeah, this is available, this is available. So let's press and continue. And then would you like to receive product updates? Well, no. All right, so then it asks for some confirmation, right? Uh, so let's look at the start of the puzzle. Pick the spiral galaxy. So pick the spiral galaxy. And now it should have created my account. Okay, so let's save this. And let's check our email. Okay, this is the code. We need to paste it here. All right, we should be ready. So I'm going to pick student or teacher really doesn't matter. So I'm a teacher. So I'm going to say, let's, uh, let's, let's go with this. But depending on to who are you working with, you can pick these ones. It really doesn't matter. Um, okay. So what specific features are you interested in using? Collaborative coding. Again, I really doubt that these things really matters. It's basically for the GitHub itself to make sure that it's sending you a relevant email about their products. Uh, so I'm going to say just uh, team admin and collaborative coding. All right. So I think our GitHub continue for free. It should. Well, this is cool. And so it is initializing my dashboard. Now I have my GitHub account. So when I click on this thing, so I'm signed in as PJ GitHub tutorials and I can look, I can go to my profile, look at my repositories, you know, uh, code spaces and gists and etc. We're going to talk about gist later on, but, uh, well, basically this is the, this is the environment uh, for the GitHub account. So if I go to my profile, so this is how it's going to look like. So I haven't done anything yet. There is no repository. I haven't made any repository yet. So this is if you make your GitHub account for the first time, right? So now I have a GitHub account with a username and password. So once you have that, you can come back to your VS Code. Okay. So 
then how can I connect this workspace to my GitHub account? Basically, so if you go to this um, source control on the left, you see there's this source control, and it says that this folder that you're working uh, in is, uh, is this for folder doesn't have a Git repository. You can initialize a repository which will enable source control features powered by Git, right? I'm going to go ahead and initialize this repository. Okay, so when I want to initialize this repository, so right now uh, it is I haven't I haven't uh, published it into any repository yet, right? But right now, if I make any changes, it's going to tell me that okay, you are making some changes, right? So let's let me actually go ahead and save this. Go back. So as you can see. Right now, there are four changes that we have in this folder. What are the four, ch four changes? Basically, I have a CSV file here, new python.py, test.py, and this machine learning syllabus PDF, right? So these are the four changes. I need to push these four changes to my GitHub repository. Pushing to a repository means that whatever changes you make, you push it to your uh, repository, and then uh, basically, from now on, it's going to be the, the sitting in your GitHub repository online. So how can I do that? Whenever you make a change, you need to commit those changes first. So let's click in here. It says, okay, let's say this is my first commit. And then I do control enter. So when I do control enter, it says that do you have some unsaved stuff. Do you want to save it and commit? I say, yes, save them all and then commit. Okay. Let's let's try it again. First commit. Yeah. Now the now it's all of them have been the, the committed. So committing means that okay, you you realize there are some changes, but you haven't pushed them to the repository yet, right? So there's nothing in this GitHub account yet. If I if I open it and refresh, I don't see any repository yet, right? But if I go ahead and publish this branch, right? So I need to publish whatever I have here in this workspace you know, online. So let's go ahead and publish this branch. As soon as I press this one, it's going to complain that, okay, you know what? You don't have GitHub extension installed. So I have to either uh, click on this hello or go to the extension, search for a GitHub extension and add it manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and say hello. And so this is, this wants to basically authorize VS Code to, have, to get access to my GitHub account. Okay, say continue. And yeah, this is the one, the, the, the account that I'm logging in right now. So I say, okay, go ahead and authorize GitHub. The authorization has been successful. Let's go back to the VS Code. Now, before we continue, we need to make sure that, that we have installed the GitHub extension. So let's go to the extensions and search for GitHub. GitHub. So the first thing that we see, this is GitHub pull request and, and issue. So this has been downloaded 5 million times. So this is the extension that we need to install before we continue. So let's go ahead and install this one. And what we need to do now is to publish that repository. So when I click on this publish branch, I will be given two options, you know, publish to GitHub private repository or publish to GitHub public repository. So basically, if you want to make your repository private or public, so I'm going to go ahead and make it public. And yeah, it's going to take some time, but now my uh, GitHub repository has been successfully published. So if I go ahead and uh, go back to my GitHub account, if I refresh this page, the repository should be here. All right, so this is my repository, workspace underscore YouTube. Okay. Now, what if we want to make some changes to our code already? So for example, I want to print something like, hello world, this is Pedram, or I don't know, make some changes here, right? So let's go ahead and say, hello world, this is Pedram. And so I make this change and I have to save it, control S. So right now, when I make a change, it says that, okay, there's a new change in, the, in this repository. So do you want to commit those changes or not? But before that, let me show you how it looks like on my GitHub account. So if I go uh, open Python file and test. So right now you see it's print hello world, right? And let me go back to my VS code and commit these uh, changes. I'm going to call it first commit. 
So, and then you do control enter. Now I have committed the change. Let's push it to the repository. So I can either click on this thing, you know, to push that, uh, it says push one commit to original uh, slash master branch, or I can click on these three dots and then say push, whatever works for you better. So you can do it either this way or click on this thing. So I usually want to see that I push it correctly. Okay, so now it is push. It means that if I go back to my GitHub, if I refresh the page, I should see hello world, this is Bedrom. Let's go ahead and refresh it. There you go. So it is working perfectly. So we were able to, the, let's go back to VS Code. We were able to the, basically make a repository for this workspace underscore YouTube folder from VS Code without having the a GitHub uh, open on a browser, okay? So this was the way if you want to, to make a repository on your local computer from VS Code. What if you want to clone to a repository, right? So if you want to clone to your own repository, so the process is like this. You go to the, well, actually you can, let me go ahead and close this workspace. Uh, remember, I can close workspace by opening up the command palette and then search for a close workspace. So, or you can memorize the shortcut key. So then when I click on this the file, the I, you can see I can directly clone a repository, right? So, and then it says that clone from GitHub. So right now there's only one repository there. So I can clone from that repository. I can put it in a different folder. So for example, I can make something called VS Code and then make a just clone that repository here. So like repository location, right? Now we're gonna open it in the same window. So this is, I, I make this working space from my own GitHub repository, right, to, to my local computer. So for example, you have a GitHub repository and you want to work on some other computer and you want to basically continue from where we left off. Basically, you want to continue your previous work, right? Now, what if you want to clone to some other repositories that does not belong to you? So how do we do that? Let me go ahead and close this workspace again by going to the command palette and close workspace. Okay, for example, I want to clone from some other people's repository. So remember, this is this is the account that we created together, PJ GitHub uh, Tutorials, and this is another account. For example, I wanna use their repository, his repository. So I go to the, for example, machine learning, and uh, I need to down. I need to copy the URL. So I press on this code and then copy the URL, right? So this is the name of the. This is the URL for the repository. Okay. Now I have the URL from this repository. I want to basically clone it to my local computer through VS Code. So go back to the VS Code and here clone a repository. So I say the, provide you. Uh, the URL for the repository. So this is the, what we just uh, copied there. And then I have to specify a folder for that. So for example, I'm gonna put it in a new folder with the same name. So I, I just call it, I don't know, machine learning or a different name, really doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm gonna select this repository location. Okay. So now I'm cloning that repository to my local computer using VS Code. So whatever is available on that repository is going to be downloaded. So it says that, would you like to open the clone repository? I say yes. And now I have access to everything that I got from that repository, right? So let's look at this one. So for example, here, uh, there is there are lectures, there are codes and etc. And I have access to all those things, which is publicly available, okay? through VS Code. So I can go to the lectures and uh, everything which is available. All right, so, so, so far, what do we know? We, we said that how we can create a GitHub repository from VS Code by basically publishing our local folder to the GitHub. 
We also talked about how we can clone for clone our own repository on our local computer. And also, lastly, we saw that how we can clone some other people's repository, right? So the only thing that you should be careful with, when you make a change to other people's repository, so for example, if I go ahead and delete this, uh, delete this uh, readme file, then I cannot simply commit these changes to some other people's repository, right? So let's say, okay, deleting, deleting the readme, right? If I go ahead and press control enter, it's going to complain, right? So, well, for the commit part, it doesn't say anything, but if I want to push it, it's going to complain. It says that you do not have permission to push it because, you know, I'm not the owner of that repository, right? You can fork a repository that basically means that you can fork a copy on your local computer and work on that copy if you want to make changes to that copy. But uh, if, if the repository is being constantly updated, forking the repository is not a good idea, right? So either you have to discard these changes or stash these changes. So by stash, I mean, you know, you, you can go to this um, three dots and then stash, right? So basically when you stash it, it means that you want to stash those changes for later use. And uh, you want to save those uncommitted changes locally that you have access to them later without pushing them to that other person's repository okay so this is a, a little more advanced topic that i'm going to cover in the next video because this video is becoming a lengthy one in the next video i'll be talking about what is the idea of stashing and then to, what is this sync setting how we can basically synchronize all the settings that we have in the vs code among multiple computers using the same uh, github account all right if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below and see you in the next one.